What did you do as an artist? Uh, you had some major. I mean, you had the, pri the, 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 the nephew of the prime minister with you. Yeah. I'm sure you had some connections in high circles. Sure, sure. I painted the portrait of King of Iran. Of the Shah. Of the Shah of Iran. Of the Shah, right? Yes. And I also painted the portrait of Prince Reza, his son, mm -hmm. when he was a child, for, for Queen Mother of uh, Iran. I painted so him. you were well connected on that level. Yeah. And that, in a way, saved your life. So. Well, okay, so we have this part that you, uh, your past history of which you ran away and you had to cut your two and a half thousand years heritage in that country. Now that you moved to London, who did you uh, right. uh, go to? I, who did you paint since then? I had a, few, a numbers of exhibitions in galleries and different constitutions in Iran, in, sorry, in London. Uh, in London I have painted um, Dr. Henry Kissinger. I painted the actress June Collins from Life City in her in her uh, apartment. I my uh, I uh, I and liked it from London. Your art was exhibited. My art was exhibited in in a, no, in a number of gal galleries. Um, uh, House of Commons. Yes, House of Commons. I had an exhibition of um, about one week exhibition. I had in House of Commons. Uh, Mrs. Lady Boothroyd, the Speaker of the House of Commons, was uh, the guest of honor together with Mr. Peter Brook, the National Heritage for um, uh, the sec Secretary, Secretary of Her National Heritage. Now we should introduce to our audience that up till now your story is that you're a Jew, but still not a very active or practicing Jew. Yeah. Now we're going to be talking about a turn that took in your life. You were Persian. Yes. which makes you Sephardi pretty much, sure. in a way. Yeah. I am American and Ashkenazi. I'm sorry, I want to interrupt you. Sure. I'm not only Persian, I am from Azerbaijan, Persia, and my nas national language is Aramaic. We so speak you're really original. <laughs> you go the all the way back to the Talmud. Oh, yes. And before that. From the destruction of the first temple, right, when the Jews went captive in Babylon, afterward when the king of Persia fought with Babylonian, freed some of them and sent them back to Holy Land to rebuild their second <laughs> temple. Right. And some of them went back to Persia. Right. And I am. You are from that, from, that, uh, sure. from those people. Now, I know you live in London. Yeah. My wife comes from London too, but I don't know you from London. I don't know you from any of this. I, as a Lubavitcher, I know you because you became, in a way, one of the artists who have made some of the most beautiful paintings that are around from the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Thank and you. I know that this has affected you. It has affected us all. So I want to talk about how did this happen? How does someone who classifies himself formally as a secular Jew, he painted kings, uh, ministers, uh, exhibits, exhibits in, in, in parliaments. How, how did you come to this whole situation of, of uh, Lubavitch and what comes along with it? Well, when you say Lubavitch, in London, we had Lubavitch neighbors. Um, they had, I didn't... You I, were like neighbor's neighbors? Yes, yes just no, 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 just next door neighbors. They were different, wearing black, on, sh on Shabbat, black hat, black, um, black coat. And I always said, why are they, why they should be different than any other Jew? Right. Why? Until... Some story I'm going to tell you. There is someone which is very dear to me. We had a problem with. And she, when she was born, she never spoke until age of like four and a half years old. Because she didn't speak, she was shouting to express herself. As a result of intensive screening, she developed a massive hernia, needed an operation. Now being a never child with a speech defect, we thought hospital environment may affect her even more and prevent her from ever speaking. Um, in this field, nobody could help. A night before operation, we wanted to go and ask our neighbor what to do. Lubavitch you neighbor. were desperate. Desperate. But you didn't go to him because it was a Lubavitch. No, no. You no. just. Yeah. We went to them, we said, you are 
Lubavitch. You are um, Orthodox. Consequently, um, and you have more children than any anybody. Uh, Everyone around, right? Therefore, more more children, more experience. What would you have? What you what would you have done if you were in our position? They said we pray to God and we retell Him. But there are more righteous people than you and I exist. We ask for a blessing. Anyway, since it was a desperate situation, when you are in a desperate situation, you prepare to believe everything. Yes, the, we ask them to ask blessing for the patients. And next door they phoned, I said, you can go to hospital, you can take the patient to hospital, no, nothing to worry about. And the Dulubavitch Rebbe said, your real family will always hear good news from the Rebbe. Meaning, you agreed to their suggestion of prayer, yeah. even though, I mean, you really didn't believe in it, but as a desperation you agreed to that. Yeah. Then they called you back with a message that the Lubavitch Rebbe said... That is correct. ...that you will have only good news. Yes, yes. So, when uh, the patient went to hospital, a day before the operation, her mother Why she they injected her with a general anesthetic before taking her to open the theater. Her mother put uh, pushed book of psalms under her pillow. If prayer does any good, let it well, be under her pillow. <laughs> and they took him. She was hoping to take this uh, person to open the theater, but uh, unfortunately they came and uh, they transferred her from one bed to another. The book remained. It wasn't with her. No, it wasn't with her. After an hour of operation finished, they brought the child back. To the same bed? The same bed. And she slept for four hours constantly. And after four hours, something very, very strange happened, and I witnessed it. Somebody, this child, opened her eyes, and she sat in the bed like a robot. She started searching for the book. Book, she never saw, we put it under her pillow. She opened it upside down, and for the first time in her life, he opened, she opened her lips, started singing, Adon Olam, Adon Olam, Asher Malach, Adon Olam, Adon Olam, Asher. with this nigun. Classical Jewish prayer that oh, yeah. you start the morning prayers yeah. with? Yeah. M maybe she, she, she knew because she was going to kindergarten, in the same time she could say, Ringo, Ringo, Roses, many uh, other she stuff. She could have said anything, yeah. right? But why... Uh, I was just looking, looking, looking. I thought I am imagining things. Yeah, but there were many people witnessed that. Two nurses, they said, we thought you said this she person doesn't speak. Doesn't speak. Why, why, why she's singing now? She's Then, uh, cut a long story short, she put the back, uh, put back under her pillow. She started running through hospital corridors. She went end of the corridors. It was right after room. an operation? Yeah. She went for uh, a room full of toys. From all the toys, she chose a very, very beautiful, huge bicycle. Started biking after her new operation with the fresh stitches <laughs> along the corridors of the hospital, backwards and forwards. The doctor said, look, she will open her stitches. Please control her. But there was like a force in her. I can do whatever. I want. Nothing will happen to me. If they said, if, the, if, the, if this is the case, they, they, she should go they home. take no responsibility. No, she should go home. Mm. Okay, her mother took her home. And everything was fine? Yeah. And... Uh, that affected you? That affected me. Then, uh, after a while, she started saying words, sentences. Now, 